you blooming health today, Mrs Slocum. Well, this country air agrees with me, Miss Brobs. Between you and me, I've left off my foundation. Oh. <laughs> it's given my skin a chance to breathe. The country air certainly perked Mr Humphreys up. Oh, I think it's that young girl, Mavis. Yes, yeah, she's a simple child, but she seems devoted to him. Mm. Probably makes a change from all those rough village boys that hang round outside the pub, try to have a kiss and cuddle with anyone that goes by. Which pub is that? <laughs> the Four Ferrets. Uh, Miss Brahms and I popped in yesterday after your trial. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't recommend it. These jukebox things they have uh, ruin the atmosphere of a coaching inn. Well, you went and pressed the button for Love Me Tender, Love Me True. Mm, quite by accident, with my elbow, as I was avoiding the barmaid's bosom as she pushed by with two pints of pig's eye scrumpy. What on earth is that? Something which wipes out the memory of ever having ordered it. Yeah, you want to stay out that public bar and all, full of those farm workers. Oh, I had to go through there to go to the loo and there was rough hands all over me. Oh, thank you for warning me, Miss Brown. <laughs> I hate that sort of thing. Is that the pub on the corner? <laughs> That's the one. Oh, it looks quite nice from outside. Yeah. Good morning, Miss Lovelock. Good morning, Captain Beacock. Someone's hogged all the hot water this morning. Really? How selfish of them. <laughs> Off on your bike, are you? I promised to exercise Sir Robert's Hunter. I'll be back in about an hour. Take any messages for me? Oh, yes, madam. Mm, that one gets right up my nose. Mr Grace probably spoiled her a bit. Older men frequently do. So we've noticed. <laughs> <laughs> been doing your keep fit, Mr Humphreys? Oof, yeah, I've been out for four hours. <laughs> Mavis has had me in the vegetable patch. <laughs> Picking peas for the pea soup. <laughs> Do you know, I shelled five pounds before breakfast this morning. It is wonderful. They come in little packets like that. You just pop the end open and open them up and there they are. No additives, no ease, no artificial colouring. Just a lot of little green bugs munching. I think I'll skip the pea soup. Ah, glad you're all there. We must have a meeting. Uh, are you free, Captain Peacock? Yes, at the moment. Uh, Mrs Slocum, Miss Brahms? Yes, we are free. Mr. Humphreys, are you, are you I'm free? I'm free. <laughs> now, I have a rather serious matter to discuss. Well, before you start, Mr. Rumbold, may I have an understanding regarding the bath water? When I performed my ablutions this morning, I got three inches of hot and about two foot of tepid. <laughs> yes, well, the baths are very big here and people have been uh, overindulging. Oh, you're right there. Captain Peacock was in there for hours this morning. It was all steam coming out the keyhole. I hope you weren't looking through it, Miss Brown. I would have done, but Miss Lovelock wouldn't move over. <laughs> Just winding you up. Well, you must all realise that it's an old-fashioned system. We'll have to ration ourselves to five inches. Do you agree, Mrs Slocum? <laughs> oh, really, Mr Rumble, we had all that during the war, and five inches goes nowhere. <laughs> Speaking for myself, four inches would be more than adequate. <laughs> there is not a solution merely to provide more hot water. No, it isn't, Captain Peacock. Me and Mavis were in that woodshed for hours, toing and froing with a cross saw yesterday. <laughs> and the wood's all gone. Well, I do not intend for one second to give up my usual big bath. Well, perhaps you'll have to go in the woodshed with Mavis. <laughs> oh, I'll organise a rotor for wood duty, and those that want more water can chop more wood. A point of order, Mr Rumbold. Is Miss Lovelock entitled to a bath in the main house, seeing as how she's domiciled in the groom's quarters? <laughs> yes, well, we do have a bit of a demarcation problem there. I'm sure Captain Peacock will help her fill her quota. <laughs> Or share his bar. <laughs> well, it's only fair if, as he says, he has an unusually big one. <laughs> yes, but what I wanted to discuss, now that we've dealt with the urgent matter of the bathwater, is that I have received a phone call from the travel agent who booked the American party who are staying with us this weekend as part of their tour of old England. Well, they want baths and all. <laughs> it seems that the last place they stayed at was a bit below par. They had damp sheets, overgrown gardens, dust and so on all over everything. 
as a result of which that hotel has been struck off the list. Now, we don't want that to happen to us. They pay very well, well over a thousand pounds per weekend, plus tips. But who are they going to tip? We've got no staff. Uh, well, we have had some replies, and I shall be interviewing some of the applicants this afternoon. Uh, meanwhile, time is short. I think we should buckle to and get this place ship-shape and Bristol fashion. Oh, does that mean calling back Miss Lovelock? <laughs> I have made out a suggested list of tasks. Uh, Captain Peacock, would you be good enough to deal with the lawns? Well, the lawns are rather extensive. I hope you're not expecting me to mow them single-handed. Perhaps you could get Miss Lovelock to harness up her horse. <laughs> Miss Brahms, it has not escaped my attention that you have been implying that I'm attracted to Miss Lovelock in some way. Overt references to sharing my bath. Uncalled for remarks, Mrs Slocum, about older men and younger women. Not to mention big ones. <laughs> All this has not escaped my attention. And let me state, here and now, that I was just showing the ordinary courtesy expected of a gentleman towards a, um... Good-looking bird. <laughs> towards a well-bred young lady who did, let us face it, look after Mr. Grace in his, let us say, um... Reclining years. <laughs> I think you've made your point, Captain Peacock. I'm sure no offence was intended, and there is a ride-on mower. Captain Peacock, on behalf of Miss Brahms and myself, may I say that no offence was intended. Isn't that right, Miss Brahms? Yes. We're just amazed you can still pull. <laughs> well, I would like to say here and now that remarks have been made about me and Miss Moulterd. And I don't mind a bit. <laughs> well, if that's settled, can we get on? Yes, yes, of course. Now, weeds, Mr Humphreys. I beg your pardon. <laughs> Weed the beds. Oh, it's a long time since I did that. <laughs> and uh, while you're about it, cut some flowers for Mrs. Slocum to arrange. Oh, roses would be nice, Mr. Humphreys. You'll find secretaries in the shed. If not, they'll be non secretaries. <laughs> Nobody got that, did they? Perhaps you could try it on Miss Lovelock. <laughs> Sorry. Now, uh, uh, Miss Brown, could you vacuum the carpet? and the stairs, right. uh, do the dusting. Oh, and the sheets came back from the laundry still a little on the damp side. Perhaps you could hang them out to air. Oh, and, and make sure that there is soap, towels and loo rolls in the bathroom. Uh, oh, and uh, perhaps oh, you could Oh, hang on a, a minute. I'm not bleeding Cinderella. <laughs> perhaps we could watch our language, Miss Brown. Well, he gets on my wick. <laughs> no, no, no. You're quite right, Miss Brahms. I was overloading you. Uh, perhaps Mr. Humphreys could deal with the kitchen. Uh, with uh, Miss Malta? Hmm? And uh, Mrs. Slocum, perhaps you could help with the sheets. Ian, what about the vacuuming? Could you help with that too, Mrs. Slocum? I am not lugging a great big vacuum up all those stairs, and I am unanimous in that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. It's not a big one. It's only a junior goblin. I'm sure the gentleman... <laughs> uh, Mr. Humphreys, could you manage a junior goblin up the stairs? Ah, Miss Lovelock. That's a fine animal. Yes, she's got a lot of Arab in her. <laughs> Makes her a bit wild. Oh, well, yes, that's only to be expected. Fortunately, I have very strong thighs. I can crush the breath out of her and slow her down. <laughs> so the control must be invaluable. <laughs> I wonder if you could uh, tell me where the, where the mower is. I'm going to manicure the lawn. Of course. I'll come along with you and help to get you going. Hasn't it got a starter? No. Just needs a strong pull. I shall follow your technique with interest. You are tall, aren't you? Oh, just 6'2". As a matter of fact, I'm the same height as Ramon Navarro. Who is he? Oh, just one of those new rock singers. <laughs> Please, don't tell me you just cut all those flowers for me. Well, I've certainly just cut them. <laughs> oh, they're lovely. Here, have you ever rotted a drain? No, but I've dealt with my mother's kitchen sink with a rubber plunger. <laughs> well, you stick this thing in and shove it up and down. I think there's a dead rat down there. I'll go and put your lovely flowers in a bucket. <laughs> You've got a natural 
don't tell him for that. <laughs> and it's my first time. <laughs> oh, it's a really good drying day, Miss Brown. All we have to do is just peg them out on the line and the breeze will do the rest. Yes, well, usually I just take them down the lawn track. By the time I've done Tesco's, they're all finished. <laughs> you are living in the country now, Miss Brown. Oh. Well, shall I get a ladder? It's a bit high, isn't it? Oh, silly girl. Oh. Ah, old-fashioned but effective. You know, we've got to learn to do things for ourselves now. Yes, well, I suppose I've always been lucky. There's always been some fella there to do things for me. Well, until recently. Whatever happened to that man with the amusement arcade in Newport Bagno? Oh, well, he got hit by the recession. And then by his wife, when she found out about me. Oh, was that the time in that hotel? In, yes. Um, uh, when you were caught in the fire escape in the United? Yes. Could they tell it was you in the photo? No. But they could see it was him when he was climbing out the window with his leg over. <laughs> Mr. Holmes. How long was it? Oh, we were together for five years, every Tuesday. Well, you mustn't give up hope, you know. I mean, you're, you're still a very attractive person. Oh, thank you. When you do yourself up. <laughs> You've got a lot to offer. Yes, well, unless they've got some lolly, I'm not offering it. You know, between you and me... I'm keeping an eye open on my own behalf. Oh. Well, there are a lot of men of property about in this part of the country, and if I find one, I shall pounce. Yes. Yeah. Do you want me to help you put it up? Oh, thank you, Miss Robbins. <laughs> oh, there, they'll dry in no time. Well, we better go and tackle the interior. Here, yeah, you know that Mr. Moulter, he's got his eye on you. No. Don't think I haven't noticed, Miss Brahms. Now, you know I'm not snobbish, but he is a bit below my station. Yeah. Real son of the soil, isn't he? Most of it's under his fingernail. Yeah. <laughs> what silly cow put that there? Don't answer him, Miss Brahms. Throttle, that's the clutch. Careful with the throttle, it's a bit sticky. Where's the brake? Well, there isn't one. Start her up. Uh, oh, yes. <laughs> oh, right. <laughs> I suppose there's a knack. <laughs> it just needs a quick pull. Allow me. Piss on. <laughs> Just release the clutch and away you go. See you later. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> to mow the verges, the council do that. Madcap. <laughs> oh, Mr. Humphreys, you're bringing that floor up a fair tree. <laughs> I think I've got housemaid's knee. <laughs> oh dear, have you had it before? Yes, as a matter of fact, I have. I got it in my hand. <laughs> my mother had quite a shock. <laughs> You need a rest. Give me Anne with the stew. Oh, right. Right, now we've done the carrots and the parsnips. Give me Anne with the onions. Um, what do we do? Peel them and chop them. Mm -hmm. Dip them in the water. You don't get them in your eyes so much. Oh, yeah, my mother used to do that. <laughs> you talk about your mother a lot. <laughs> when did you finally leave home? Thursday. <laughs> Have you never been married? No, never. No, I never found Miss Wright. Sounds like your life's been a bit lonely. Well, yes, I suppose so. <laughs> Still, I, I've had a good life. 
I've had some lovely Christmases. <laughs> got a lot of cards. <laughs> and the milkman and the dustman used to come in. <laughs> We'd have a drink and tell a few jokes. <laughs> we did laugh. <laughs> I've been on some nice holidays as well. I used to go to Western Supermare, paddle, listen to the band. I often used to think to myself, why are the people having as much fun? Well, it's nice to have happy memories you can laugh about. I've had a lovely life here in the country. And it's been a lot happier since you've been here. <laughs> Are them flowers heavy? Oh. I said, are them flowers heavy? Miss Bronze, if you are inferring that I am not pulling my weight, may I remind you that I have vacuumed this entire room while you were unwrapping loo rolls, which was hardly exhausting. But I don't think these carpets will need doing again in a hurry. Most of the pattern went up the pipe. Well, if what we've done to that vacuum, there's hardly any sack left. I've had the same dead moth up the nozzle three times. Keep falling out. If you ask me, the sooner the staff get here, the better. Congratulate you on the stew, Mr. Humphreys. Mind you, the gravy was a bit salty. We cried a lot into the onions. <laughs> uh, I should like to congratulate you all on your efforts this morning. The flower arrangements looked particularly effective, Mrs. Slocum, and the carpet came up remarkably well. Yeah, most of it came up the vacuum. <laughs> I am not, however, so pleased about the lawns. The stripes should go up and down, not round and round in a circle. That was the second time the throttle stuck. I also had a complaint that you were seen driving the mower on the public highway. That was the first time the throttle stuck. There is also the question of what you intend to do about the hole in the hedge. I have a suggestion about that. Oh, what is that, Captain Peacock? I'm going to suggest that you get out there and stuff it up yourself. <laughs> Captain Peacock, I'm not used to being spoken to like that. Then you better get used to it. We're not in the store now, you know. Now then, that's enough of that bickering. Cross words make cross faces, and we don't want them at the table. And you, Mr. Rumbold, what do you mean by leaving those tatoes? We're not having saucy plates round here. We snap want not. Now, eat them up. No, I not you know. Don't you talk with your mouth full. No, it's fine. You should do a bit more work, Rem, dear. Mr. Rumphrey's nearly done himself in rodding this morning. <laughs> Is there anything you wish to say, Mr. Rumphrey? I think I'll have Mr. Rumbo's potatoes. <laughs> Sorry to bar Jim when you got your snouts in the trough. <laughs> I've just come to tell you that I'm real cut up about them sheets. Oh, I suppose it wasn't really your fault. Well, I've oozed that water in the cow's drinking trough, put the sheets in the soak. <laughs> now, which sheets are those? Mrs. Slocum and I hung them out to air and he ran over them in a tractor. And why wasn't I informed? Because you were too busy poking your nose into the hole in the hedge. If you won't start again, you'll get no pudding either. <laughs> Mr. Moulton, was the tank clean? Oh, yes. I hosed it out with sheet dip. <laughs> and then I put in one of them detergents like the as on television. All they need now is a good stir to get the tire marks out. <laughs> oh, we'd better go and see what he's done. Yeah. <laughs> there it is. Well, it's a horse trough. That's what we use in the country when there's a big job. Of course, we used to do it in the stream till Sir Robert let his cows pat in it. <laughs> Mind you, 
That stream still brings my trousers up a tree. <laughs> lucky we've got all this modern equipment. Well, it's no good you all looking at it. Miss Darren Frizz, Captain Peacock, take your shoes and socks off. Huh? Roll up your trousers. <laughs> and get in and tease all the dirt out. <laughs> What are we supposed to do? Tuck your skirts in your knickers. <laughs> oh, why should you worry? I've seen it all before. You have not seen it all before. <laughs> Tizzling's good fun. Oh, yes, come on in. The water's lovely and warm. Well, you can't tease all without a Tizzling song. Dad's known all over the district for his Tizzling. <laughs> I knew you'd be a good sport and join in. Mm. One, two, three, four. <laughs> Teasel Dublin, Teasel Dean, Teasel till it's time for tea. Teasel left and Teasel right, till the sheets are nice and white. All together. Teasel Dublin, Teasel Dean, Teasel till it's time for tea. Teasel left and Teasel right, Teasel till the sheets are white. Catch your little thing, isn't it? <laughs> the dirt and out the stain till it's teasing time again. Tease a lot and tease all down. Make your trousers nice and brown. <laughs> there, that'll do. But they're still a bit damp. They'll dry off on the rack. Still a faint aroma of sheep dip. <laughs> Bounce some air freshener on them. Oh, that's a good idea, Miss Grams. Now, what shall we have? Evening dew or autumn verbena surprise? Don't use that one. It's oven cleaner. We don't want to go teasling again. <laughs> Stand back. <laughs> ah, I have good news. Some applicants have arrived for the staff appointments. Captain Peacock, are you free to interview? I shall be in a moment. Will I finish you, sir? You run along, Mr. Humphries, and do your interviewing. Off you all go. I'll have a nice cup of tea waiting for you when you've done. We'll interview them in the main hall. Uh, this is now a matter of some urgency, as Mr. Frobisher of the travel agency is arranging for a photographer to come tomorrow morning to take a picture of the staff for the new brochure. Oh. Off you will. <laughs> Before we start, can we all agree what sort of qualities we're looking for? Hard workers. And they must have good references. And they must be game for a teasel. <laughs> they must be cheap. Uh, Mr. Moulter is holding them back in the billiard room. How many are there? Uh, at the moment, two. <laughs> Could we have the first one, Mr. Moulter? Mrs. Clegg <laughs> Ah, Mrs. Clegghampton. Uh, Mrs. Clegghampton is applying for the post of chambermaid. Oh. Good <laughs> afternoon. Uh, uh, perhaps you'll give us your CV. You what? Your CV? No. I'm a lapsed Catholic. <laughs> what was your last position? I was in Madame Tussauds for ten years. <laughs> what section did they put you in? Historical. <laughs> There's not a monarch hasn't had my feather duster up his regalia. <laughs> I was there for ten years and I ended up in a chamber of horrors. Bride in the bath. Mm. Did you leave of your own volition? No, I left the ambulance. <laughs> I get these dishy spells, you see. Yeah. Are you acquainted with the vacuum cleaner? Oh, yes, but I don't do stairs. Not about washing up? No. I can't put my hands in detergent. They all come up. Can you make beds? Oh, yes. But I can't change sheets and pillowcases. <laughs> when I was younger, I used to trap the pillow under my chin but since I had my operation, I'm not... <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Craig Hampton, I, I think what we have in mind for you is perhaps too arduous. Good afternoon. I don't think she's going to make it to the door. <laughs> oh, 
Mr. Rumbold, be gentle with her. Of course. Next! <laughs> oh, oh, the next one is Mr. Volpone. He's been a first-class waiter for 30 years in Bristol, Manchester, Glasgow, London and Edinburgh. In hotels? Uh, restaurant cars, British Rail. <laughs> May we stop the tea, maid, and Mr. Volpone's just waiting to demonstrate his skill by bringing it to you. 30 years as a restaurant car attendant's a pretty good recommendation. Simon! Mr. Volpone! <laughs> I think he's been shunted into a siding. <laughs> and they're all for the first sitting, mind the doors. I ought to mention that the uniform goes with the job. <laughs> he's got yesterday's lunch menu down here. <laughs> Well, thank you, Mr. Volpone. We'll let you know. Well, I'm on the 8.45 to Edinburgh, but you can get in touch with me at Darlington because the station master there will hold a board up with a message on it, but don't make it too long. It's an express. <laughs> well, that's it then. Oh, I'm Frobisher, the travel agent. I'm sorry, but I couldn't get the uh, photographer for tomorrow, so he'll be here at six o'clock this evening. Had the staff standing by about five two. Sorry, <laughs> moustache. The place is looking first class. Love the whirly effect on the lawn. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mr. Rumbold, I don't see how we can open without a staff. But if we don't open, we don't cop the lolly. You better get off your backside, son, haven't you? Well, well, don't don't you talk, talk, I mean, it all And that does it. You're all arguing again. You'll get no supper. <laughs> Except for you, Mr. Emphries. You and me will have a little nibble upstairs. 